If ever there was a dire convergence of great forces, it was now and in this place. The gods were descending to the mortal soil to do battle. Shapings were being forged of flesh and bone, and the blood of sorcery now boiled with a madness born of inevitable momentum. Crone had never felt more alive. I think it's only right that we ask, is it Malazan or Malazan? He doesn't care. Hello and welcome to the Black and Blue Collar Reader. My name is Dan and today I'm going to be reviewing The Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is the first book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen and there are, yes, 10 books in this series. All of those books have been purchased and I will be jumping into them shortly. However, let's go over the first book and my experience with actually deciding to jump into this Husky series. So, I work 40 hours a week. I have two dogs, two cats, two boys, and a partridge in a pear tree. So when I pick a series, I want to make sure that I am not wasting my time. So when I did my due diligence and I got on the internet and I went out there and I started, you know, researching Malazan, like, hey, you can't go out into the fantasy community without bumping into Malazan, right? He is all over the place and he's a big dude. And he is loved by a lot of people. However, there are many people out there that just, it doesn't gel with that first book. Many people out there have DNF this book. And for me, I thought this book was amazing. But I do see that there were some negatives. And I will start off with those minuscule negatives, in my opinion. I believe there is a contextual issue. With Erickson, you are thrown into the middle of a, of a war or a scenario, and you do not get much background as to why you're there. Um, we also have a power change where there was an emperor who was assassinated, and now we have a new uh, empress, and we don't know what happened with the emperor, why he was assassinated, who assassinated him. That is all in the foreground, and we do not get that information. Another minor, minuscule thing is that there are multiple upon multiple POVs in this series. And because there are so many, we really don't get to dive too much in to one particular character. We get a little bit here, we get a little bit there, but for the most part, we do not get the full scope or background of any one character. Another thing is the magic really isn't so fleshed out. And for me, that is okay. I don't need to know everything about the magic. I don't need it to be like a name of the wind. There are other stories out there whose magic isn't so fleshed out. You know, Lord of the Rings, I'm looking at you. So, and that's considered one of the greatest fantasy stories ever told. So why did I like this story? I mean, come on. It had everything I wanted. It had assassins. It had sorcerers. It had political intrigue. It had multiple races. It even had a gigolo. And what else did it have? It had gods. I mean, gods just sitting up there stirring shit up like sugar in their morning coffee gods. And I loved almost every minute of this series. I love the story arcs from our characters. I love the characters and the world building. And, you know, Erickson's prose were amazing. Let me just touch on the characters first. My first character I'm touching on is going to be Whiskey Jack. 
Uh, what a name. Do we have to go any further? Whiskey Jack, right? I mean, I wish I had a name like that. You know, maybe Drambuie Dan. No, I don't think that's going to work. Anyway, Whiskey Jack, right? This guy is a fall from grace military general who is in charge of a misfit group of military, you know, people called the Bridge Burners. And within the Bridge Burners, we get a mysterious teenage woman named Sari. We get an assassin named Callan. We get a sorcerer named Quick Ben. A healer named Mallet, a demolition expert named Hedge, and we've slowly come to realize that, you know, the bridge burners may not still be beholden or loyal to the Empire of Malazan. We also move on to a city called Jerugistan where we get more characters. And if you've read this story, you were probably going to know the person I bring up next who is my favorite character in this book and his name is Kruppa. Kruppa was my man. Kruppa is a fat sorcerer that's always disheveled and sweating. He likes the finer things in life like pastries and wine. And he has this whimsical, poetic way of speaking in the third person. Kruppa was the man. And when he's described to you, you really don't think that this dude could be powerful or a badass. But yo, don't judge a book by its cover. Kruppa is the Man, I loved every part that Kruppa was in. He had dreams with gods in him. It was just an amazing ride when Kruppa entered the story. And the next person I'm going to talk about, the next character, is the runner-up for the baddest name, right? We have Anamander Rake. He is a Tisht on D general. He is a general of the moon spawn. And the moon spawn is this huge crater that hovers in the sky with a city on top and crows and ravens swirling all around it. And Animander Rake has an animal companion, a crow named Crone. Animander Rake has this obsidian black skin with silver hair and a sword that smokes. And his dialogue is just, uh, this dude stole the show. Anytime he was on the page, he was mysterious. He was ancient. He was powerful. And dude knew he was powerful. I love that character. The next character story that I loved was Tattersail. She had such an amazing story arc. The one thing that really stuck out to me about Tattersail was her figure. Tattersail was a healthy woman. Check this picture out. She don't look like Cersei. She don't look like Yasna. She don't look like Shallan. She ain't a chicken wing. She's a T-bone steak. And I loved seeing a healthy woman in a position of power, who was powerful, and who was beautiful and portrayed as such in the story. And me, being a big stock myself, being a Sir Mix-a-Lot fan, and being told that I'm not fat, I'm just big boned my whole life, I loved seeing a healthier woman as a protagonist and one that wasn't your comic relief in a story and that one that had depth and authority and power and thank you Steven Erickson us big people salute you buddy thank you and listen I really love this book it was an amazing ride there were some aha and oh shit moments I'll probably give this four oh shit moments out of five I love this story and listen don't be intimidated because this is such a massive series you can get this first book and if you don't like it you can stop there you know why because this story had finality it really wrapped up really nice at the 
end. And it didn't leave you on some cliffhanger where you think you got to buy the next book to move on with the story. No, it ended and it was very well done. I loved Erickson's writing. I loved the plot. And of course, I loved the characters. Hey, listen, if you like Gardens of the Moon, drop me a comment down below. Let me know. If you hated Gardens of the Moon and you hated my review, drop me a comment in the bl below because I got tatter sale skin. You know what I mean? I got that thick skin. So hey, I can't wait to talk to some people about it. Hit like, drop a comment, subscribe if you want. That would be cool. But I'm going to keep rolling on with these reviews. My next review is going to be R. Scott Baker's The White Love Warrior. And really, I hope we get some of these guys in that story, if you know what I mean. Yes, sir. I hope we get some skin spies. So, hey, I'm going to drop a review on that whenever I get through it. And um, if you like the content, like I said, hit like, subscribe. And until next time, let's keep growing as people. Let's keep growing as readers. And until I see you again, peace. Everything that happens is motivation.